I have been on a short story kick recently, and so today we are going to talk about Stephen King's latest book of short stories called You Like It Darker. And honestly, every time I read Stephen King, I'm always blown away by what a masterful storyteller he is. He pulls me in and his writing keeps me up too late at night when I should go to bed, but I can't stop reading. It is a blessing and a curse. It's more blessing. It's fine if I don't get enough sleep from reading. Like, it's all good. So, you like it darker. I absolutely loved this collection. It's fan fantastic. The first story is Two Talented Bastards. And I loved it. Because I love paranormal stories. And this is a paranormal story. So there's these two buddies, Laird Carmody and Dave Laverdier. Or Uncle Butch, as known to Laird's son. Laird's son kind of tells a story and his dad has just passed away. And so they grew up in a small town. His dad and his best friend, Uncle Butch, they were always together and they always used to go out hunting every year in this woods called 30 Mile Woods. You know, they never really had a crazy proclivity for what they ended up doing later in life where Butch became a famous painter and Laird became a famous author and it happened like right at the same time. There's this lady, Ruth Crawford, who wants to get an interview and had been trying for years before the dad passed away and really wanted to know like, how was it that these two all of the sudden, like in their forties became like rose to fame for their painting and writing? Like, how did that happen? Seems really kind of suspicious. There was one trip when the dad and the friend went hunting and when they came back the son like his mom was like hey your dad and his friend seem like they've seen a ghost they said they got lost in the woods or whatever but they know that was like the back of their hand like what happened out there what happened to those two and it was some really weird strange paranormal stuff that happens it was awesome great story i enjoyed all of these but obviously i always have my favorites Another favorite was Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream, and that might be my number one favorite in this. That one is actually a longer story. That one's the one that kept me up at night that I couldn't stop reading. So Danny Coughlin has this dream one night about he's at this old, like, decrepit gas station down this weird dirt road, and he's walking around, and he goes around back, and he sees this dog. And this dog is like chewing on this hand that has a charm bracelet around it. And there's this like old oil barrel and just garbage kind of laying around. And he has a weird dream about it. And it just seems very real, I guess. And so he's never had any premonitions before or anything like that. It keeps bugging him and it's in the back of his mind. And so at some point he's like, he looks up the gas station by the name and finds out, oh, there is some in these different areas. And then he finds one that's on this road because he dreamt about the road sign too. And he goes and he decides he's going to go check it out just because for some reason he can't get this stupid dream out of his head. And he goes there and he finds the dog like the dog's been freaking waiting for him and he finds this body. Okay. And so he decides he's going to, you know, call this into the cops. He doesn't want the dog to like eat the arm or whatever. So he puts this like oil barrel over it or whatever. And then, you know, he does it anonymously, but the cops track him down anyway and he becomes a murder suspect. And he's never had any of these premonitions before and this kind of ruins his life because he might go to jail and it's a whole crazy story of what happens. Does he get off? Does he go to jail? Who knows? You'll have to read it to find out. And it's such a phenomenal story. I loved it so much. It's so good. There is also the sequel to Cujo and this called Rattlesnakes. Another fantastic story. You get a bit of, you know, the where are they now or what happened to them afterwards after all the craziness of what happened in Cujo. I'm not going to give any spoilers in case I know that book's super old, but if you haven't read it, there would be a huge spoiler. So I'm not going to get too into any of the details about that, but that story's great. I also loved the last story called The Answer Man. Who was The Answer Man? So there's this guy. His name's Phil Parker. And one day he's driving down the road and, uh, he had taken some time off because he was trying to decide if he wanted to go and stay in this small town and be a lawyer in a small town or join the family firm and do this and that. And uh, he's worried that if he does one or the other, that 
the woman that he's been with for so long won't marry him and all this stuff and he's driving and he hasn't th gotten to any of the answers he wanted it's been a few days he's gonna have to go back soon and when he's driving he sees a sign that says the answer man two miles like okay weird and then he sees another and it's like the answer man one mile and then he gets and he sees this guy sitting on the side of the road with like his little setup little canopy above him and it's the answer man and it's like fifty dollars for you know five minutes and he'll tell you answers to your questions you know at first as most people think like oh this is fake some you know like fortune teller bs and the answer man's like well you know you could ask me something like hey what's my mother's maiden name or something only you would know that would be impossible for me to know and also he's like oh yeah the first three questions are free and the guy ends up already asking because it's really hard not to ask questions when the answer man like to find out about the answer man he kind of blew all his questions on dumb questions eventually he starts to maybe believe so he asks a bunch of questions he asked about will he stay in this town and do this or or if his uh girlfriend will still marry him and this that and the other even though the answer man is like you know the answers to those questions already but you know he answers them anyways and in the story he does see the answer man two other times in his life and it's so freaking good who was the answer man who was he good was he bad was he just a being out of time you almost get the vibe that like it's like jesus or something but it's not jesus i don't know it was someone with like a, the knowledge of everything of all things time was not future past or present time just was for this answer man and just i don't know i i love stories like that i thought it was really cool and i skipped over another story that i really liked too i don't know why i did that i jumped straight to this one because that was the last story in the book but the dreamers also so weird so like hp lovecraftian so this guy ends up getting this job for this like gentleman scientist who wants to do work with like dreams but like what's under the dream right so they do this thing where they hypnotize these people and they want them to go into this house and to look and see this like crack in the floor and then like lift it up and see what's under the floor and so the people that start to do this, like some of they just can't lift it up until you get to a certain part where you find the people who can. And under the floor apparently is like just this horrible stench and evil smell. And it seems like real bad stuff's under there, like under the dream. And this guy's trying to figure out like what's beyond the, the subconscious or whatever. And it's a crazy story. It's also great. There's like, I don't know. I liked pretty much all the stories in this book. Most of the stories are pretty short with the exception of a few like Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream I think is probably the longest one in there that had to be over a hundred pages. That one went on for a while as in Rattlesnakes is a bit longer too but if you like King, if you like short stories definitely pick this one up. It's great. I cannot recommend it enough and if you like Stephen King next video coming up will be another Stephen King book so stick around check it out and if you had fun hanging out today hit that subscribe button come back see me again and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.